Welcome to this short video tutorial on Keso software. My name is Simon Schütte. I'm a researcher at Interest University in the area of Kansai engineering. The software is available freely on the internet. If you can, you can find it on www.kanseiengineering.net. It is used to collect data from real customers. It is able to evaluate uh, the data according to Kansai engineering rules and uh, it will present the data later on. It consists out of three parts. Uh, one part is uh, creating a collection data collection soft uh, data collection site. The other one is to uh, evaluate the data and the final part is then to uh, present the data. So this is what the software produces. Uh, in the first step, in the first step, it produces a data collection sheet. Um, this is a data collection sheet from an old study we have been doing. It's a study on the knob for manipulating the temperature inside the car. I will show you eventually. So, uh, uh, what this data collection sheet does in the first place is it, doing, it's asking you some type of uh, um, demographic questions, for example, the age. I'm choosing one or something like that and uh, the gender it's uh, you know it's asking whether I have a car or not and um, the purpose for these questions are is that uh, you later can stratify the data easily so for example you can later on present the data just for those people who own the car or not or just for the younger people or the older or just for men or women differently so you can see if these uh, if there are differences in in different backgrounds you can you will see later on that you can choose this question and uh, when you choose this question do that in accordance to what you think could be a discriminating question a question in terms of uh, well that we accept uh, or expect that uh, there are differences in um, how the different groups will answer so uh, this one is about how much do you drive uh, less than 10,000 kilometers more and, and so on so the experience probably is a discriminating factor uh, and when you have uh, gone through this you will get pictures images of the actual knob and then they will see a couple of words what the participants are supposed to do then is that uh, they will have a look on on the image and then they will evaluate the image how exclusive do you think this is and then you just click here and move it here and just drop it um, you can now say well okay it's very difficult to uh, to determine whether this knob is exclusive or not uh, that is absolutely sure in this particular study we had the knobs built in into car dummies and people were uh, were able to have a look on the knob and manipulate it and test it and, uh, and so on before they made their estimation. Depending on the product you're using, uh, you might present it in different ways. You also have the possibility to um, present video files instead of the picture or in addition to the picture or even, uh, even sound files. Um, sometimes that is not enough. For example, for this, how is the feeling when, when you move it? Or for uh, food products, for example, if you do a product, if you do a study on chocolates, you would probably have to provide the real chocolate if you want to evaluate the taste. Uh, then you would use this software as we just put a text here saying, "Well, please, uh, please evaluate chocolate sample number 15," and people would do this. And then you can see here, then go through and how exclusive does it feel, how exact is the positioning, how. Uh, how hard is it to manipulate it? How robust does the bottom feel? And uh, what is the overall quality feeling about that? And you go on and do that with the next button. You go on until you have uh, evaluated all the product samples we had in mind. And uh, then the data is submitted to, to the system and um, you will have a screen saying thank you very much for particip particip participating in our study. So how do we achieve this? Uh, firstly, you go to the homepage uh, www.kanseiengineering.net uh, and here we will be forwarded here, uh, but that's not an important thing. 
um, you go to login and for those of you who are new to the software you go and create a new account for you who already have an account you go and log in and submit uh, then the home button will just leave you here where you already are uh, the use settings will give you the opportunity to change the color agua is the uh, default color for the uh, uh, customer collection sheet uh, we will you will be able to change the password you will uh, have your user information your personal information which you've been setting in when you created the account uh, you can upload your do, you know, you know, logotype um, your company logotype that will be on top of the uh, data collection sheet if you want to and uh, if you're not a uh, um, premium user you can uh, ask for for becoming one uh, the default settings of uh, queso is uh, that you just can use two words and two different products um, that is not enough for actually doing a study but for uh, for evaluating the software usually we uh, use the software you can use the software for free just drop me a line tell me who you are and why you need it and uh, I will grant you full access to the software the next pull down on the software is uh, the survey manager this is the heart of the software um, here you can see this, uh, if, if you're new to it, this will be empty, and here you can see uh, here will all you know, all your studies, your old studies. You have um, the possibility to have a look at when it was created, uh, a short description. We will show you. I will show you eventually how how that is done, uh, the status, if it's active or if it's inactive, uh, how many answers you have. Uh, sometimes it's. Uh, good to know okay how many answers do i have is it worth to do a evaluation already or shall i wait or shall i remember people who are asked to do the evaluation and uh, here we have a pull down where you can either close uh, the survey repost it meaning remembering people reminding people um, you can pre-evade the survey you can remove the survey and you can download the survey data have that in mind um, so this is what's what's usually done i will go to this uh, study i already shown uh, showed you uh, uh, regarding the knob where change the temperature of the car environment inside the car and uh, what you will see is when you do a new study is uh, you will always have this type of graph here you start with the um, choice of domain and then define the domain in the space of prop uh, space of properties and the semantic space and in the end you will get some type of evaluation um, if you start the study from scratch it will be empty i think it might be a point to to show you how to do that and start a a new a totally new study now locked out i will just we lock on survey manager create a new study um, so the survey name i will call it test and uh, now i have the possibility to add a description the description is what will show up in the survey manager as i showed you just a second ago uh, i leave that blank here just for uh, demonstration of service purposes uh, in the next step you will see that uh, we have the uh, the procedure figure here or, or the um, uh, empty uh, we will start with the choice of domain and the demographic questions these are dem demographic questions if you remember were those questions about the age the gender the uh, how far you're um, familiar with the product for example this button this car um heat the buttons it was a car the question do you have a car how many kilometers do you drive and so on so uh, if we now make a study on say uh, two toothbrushes brushes we could ask people about the gender and um, if we think that uh, there might be differences in the opinion of men and women on on that point so for the question is uh, you could put in please Um, please, well, well, I just uh, 
gender. Then we will have the alternatives male and female and add the question and now it appears here. Well, next one we could ask for the age. And uh, for the age we could have we could have uh, intervals between 10 and 20. 21 and 30 and so on. As you see, I now have added a couple of more inter age intervals, sent them to add question, and they appear here. The problem with the software, it's a beta software, we don't use it or we don't sell it, it's not a commercial software, and uh, it has a couple of bugs. Uh, I have to admit, small things, however, but uh, they can be disturbing in some way. So, for example, if you now come up with, okay, the age, oh, I added, I, I would like to have somebody 60 to 65, uh, then you can't modify that anymore. You have to remove it, and you have to do the whole thing again. Um, sorry for that. We are working with that. There's a new version of the software on its way. Uh, <clears throat> there are other questions as well. We have a range question. Um, so, for example, if uh, you would like to ask people between, say, uh, 20 and 30 years of age, and everybody else should not participate in the, uh, in the questionnaire, you could say, well, uh, put in your age, please. And then you have a minimum age of 20 and the maximum age of 30. If you add this question now, uh, people who are putting in 40 or 5 or 10 won't be able to participate in the uh, in the questionnaire also we have a free text question could be something like um, if you want to have a comment that is something which you can't use mathematically but uh, you can export that data later on and uh, have a look on that question later on if you click on next you see that uh, the first part of the figure is already of the procedure is already green, so that's okay, and uh, you will be forwarded here. These are the Kansai words. Here you can read a little bit about the uh, Kansai words. What do the Kansai words mean, and what is the space of uh, the semantic space? The semantic space is a space which. Uh, describes the product from an effective site. So, for example, if we're talking about um, toothpaste, for example, uh, and you would ask people about uh, their experience with toothpaste, they would probably tell you something that's fresh, it's minty, it's... Uh, um, yeah, whatever. Uh, they would come up with adjectives usually to describe their products uh, they're using. And uh, these are the words which we are trying to capture. Um, typically, we uh, apply a methodology called uh, um, uh, called uh, card system, or uh, you can't even use uh, different other systems where you, uh, where you can group words together according to affinity. So uh, imagine you have a uh, hundred different adjectives. You would probably want to. Uh, reduce them to a number of between 10 and 15 words. And how do we do this? Yeah, if you look on these words, you see that the words have a certain affinity to each other. I have another lecture here, so uh, you can see that how that's done. But uh, usually you do that according to affinity, meaning that a word describing a car, fast, sporty, uh, agile and so on will be in the same group and other things like uh, luxurious, uh, easy access, uh, comfortable would be another group. Uh, by, by that you would group these 100, 150 words to well, 10 or 15 groups and then you find representative words for each of those groups. Um, and these representative words are then put in here um, by say, well, cool would be one word you might describe your toothbrush with. And uh, you would add the same word here. Why do we make a difference between the word and the question? Yeah, sometimes, if you add, it appears here, 
same thing here you can't change it anymore if you want to change it you have to remove but uh, what back to the difference between words and question so soft for example what is soft for a toothbrush people could consider the shaft as soft because uh, well it's not very rigid is it the good thing is the bad thing uh, you could um, you could uh, consider the uh, the upper part the front part um, and and uh, the straw actually going on the teeth as soft so uh, you have to be more specific sometimes so you can ask them how soft are is the shaft for example and uh, then you have a more specific question usually you don't use that option usually you have the word and the question here and you try to find words which are <clears throat> not easily to to confuse um how many words depends totally on the product depends totally on how many uh, ratings the customer are willing to do and to willing to make um uh, more than a hundred ratings in the in the uh, rating form um, might result into uh, decreasing reliability of the total data so 100 rating total would be okay so meaning that you have 10 products and 10 words is 100 rating so 10 words 7 to 10 words is a typical way we choose to go on with just these two words if i press on next you see this one is good it's becoming green and we hop towards this uh, part this is the uh, um, space of application or space of properties which is also called okay now you see that I added a couple of uh, choices and in and I click on add questions what happens then uh, again the uh, question appears here one of the problems with this software is that uh, you can't change that anymore once you have pressed add question so if you after words feel that okay there should be something which I, I should add or change you have to remove the whole answer uh, the whole question and uh, then uh, start over again uh, it's a beta software um, we are working with the uh, new versions of it of course um, then we have other types of questions for example the range questions so say uh, you are you want to uh, ask people between 20 and 30 years of age and uh, everybody else should not be able to participate that formula uh, that uh, and in this case you put a range question in here say well between 20 no 20 and 30 and uh, then you put in your age here again and add the question it will appear here well h h it's it's the same but different it's just for demonstrational purposes here but what happens now is that uh, when you uh, when when the participants uh, fill in the questionnaire uh, you will you will be asked for your age you put in say 40 years of age and then the system will say it will tell you that uh, you're not able to uh, to participate in that study so in this way you will be uh, sure you will just um, collecting the right data also you have the choice to choose a free text question uh, the case of software cannot handle that uh, free text question in terms of evaluation but uh, you can download the free text question or the answers for the, uh, the free text question later on uh, and and have them manually evaluated later on okay when you're ready with that and uh, when you're happy with that uh, you go to next you will see that uh, the uh, the first bubble here up here appears green which means uh, check that is okay and you can just go on in the next step you create the semantic space the semantic space is uh, the emotional response people get from a certain product so if you would ask people about their impression of their well say toothpaste uh, they will come up 
with uh, words describing their toothpaste. They will probably tell you, well, it's fresh, it's minty, it's nice, and, and so on. So those words, people usually prefer to express their feelings, their emotional feelings, their effect, affection against the product, towards the product, are usually adjectives. And uh, these adjectives can be many. So uh, we usually use affinity diagram to reduce the initial amount of, uh, of uh, words towards a handleable number. Um, in the course, you will get tools to do that as well. Um, you can look for affinity diagram in the card systems and uh, you will get solutions how to do that. Even uh, fact analysis is a useful tool to do so. But um, what you probably would do is that you ask people how would you describe the product in question and uh, you get a lot of words and then you try to group them according to affinity. So for example, if you ask people to describe cars or their car, they would probably tell you that uh, your words like fast, powerful, agile, quick, and so on, which have some type of affinity to each other, and they would cluster together in a group. And then they would have other word, words like calm, elegant, uh, relaxing, and, and so on, which, uh, which in, in some way present another dimension. Uh, those are actually dimensions which can be described mathematically in a vector space and this is what we mean by the semantic space you can read more in on, on the home page uh, on uh, about that but anyhow uh, from these groups you then choose one or two words uh, these one or two words uh, will then be put into the system and uh, this is what uh, what we do here so for example if we go back to uh, our example of toothbrushes uh, you would probably <clears throat> i'm sorry you would probably say well you have some lifestyle aspect there or group life expressing lifestyle aspects so cool could be one one word and you add these words in both word and question press add and it will appear here the uh, obvious question to ask now is why do we have word here and question here and if we put in the same thing yeah well so imagine you would have the word soft uh, the word soft can be describing a lot of different things on the toothbrush for example the head can be soft so it's a nice feeling or on, on, on your teeth or in your mouth it's so soft it could be also the handle which could be soft which may be necessarily a good thing it can be soft can can mean weak as well so uh, if you have to specify the the word you're choosing uh, you would maybe add a more elaborate question something like what is the or how 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 soft is the head of your of your tooth brush okay um, you can add as many words as you want uh, what would be an, a suitable number um, difficult to say but in general we can say that uh, you shouldn't have more than a uh, hundred ratings so if you later on present uh, samples of different products to people so if you have 10 samples uh, then you can cho choose 10 words at maximum then you would have 100 ratings uh, above that number of 100 uh, ratings per person uh, we can see that the data quality has a tendency to, to generate and the data gets less reliable anyhow if you're doing this just for testing purposes um, to, to learn about the software it would be suitable to choose one or two, three words or something like that. We'll go on with two words. We click next and uh, you see this uh, box becomes green. So we are ready and the system automatically jumps to, to this site. The right hand side describes the space of properties. So as I told you before, uh, we have, we describe products from two different perspectives the 
effective site on the left hand, which we already done with the semantic space, and now the physical site. So now we are looking for properties which define the two brushes we are, we are intending to evaluate. So for example, the color could be an item. We add that here. And then we could have another item such like the size. Okay. Um, this is, we, we usually ask people using samples, uh, uh, using different tools, marketing tools to find out which are the properties which affect people most. This is just for demonstrational purposes. So color and size probably is something which is pretty obvious on the toothbrush, and that's why we are choosing it. Um, if you click on color, you can choose which type of colors you want to evaluate. So blue, add yellow, yeah, and say green. And then we can go to the size, and for the size we have a long and short. So how do we choose this? A uh, bit difficult, requires a little bit of, uh, of experience, but in general uh, it is uh, dependent on what people want or what people experience as important. Uh, we, we can see that uh, many users of products do have focus on maximum two or three different properties, whether it's a new car or if it's uh, the new pen or the mo new mobile phone. They are often but just focused on a few of the, of the traits and uh, it's important to find those traits and um, be able to vary them in, in, a, in a good way. Good. When that decision is done, click on Next. The box becomes green. Everything is OK. And now we have to find samples for each product property. And uh, we try to find samples which represent this physical space in a proper way, meaning that we need one sample which is blue and long, and we need one sample which is blue and short, we need one sample which is yellow and long, and we need one sample which is yellow and short, and green and long, and green and short. So these are all possible combinations, um, which means that uh, in total we need six samples. Pictures, as I, as I told you, uh, images, pictures, uh, um, video tapes, audio tapes, okay, maybe not on... Uh, on, on uh, toothbrushes, but uh, usually on, on most products we need those. Um, you can easily understand that uh, the more categories per item I am choosing, the more uh, samples I need to present. And that in general can become a problem quite easy. So if I have uh, four or five items and uh, each of them have two or three categories, uh, the number of samples I need to present is enormous. Here we uh, are using methods for reducing that and uh, we can do that either manually or we're using um, statistical methods. Uh, in the course we also present one or two of those methods which, um, which are reducing the number of possible uh, samples we, we want to present. Um, Keso software does a full factor experiment, meaning all possible combinations are, are chosen here. As you see, I have uh, just chosen two items, color and size, and I have uh, chosen three categories here, blue, yellow and green, and uh, two categories here, long, long and short. That results into this six possible solutions, uh, samples, and those samples I will present to the customer. If you're doing this in the purpose of uh, just testing, I would re recommend using just two 
categories uh, or well could say well maximum six categories totally so three here and two here is five so i could add one more here then this becomes nine in the full factor analysis and this is a hand is a number which is well you can handle that later on okay enough with the, the theory now we go on uh, and we will add all these samples so sample one this is sample one add now you see it has been added to our experimental design sample two add sample three and so on i think you got the point okay done you see sample one two six unfortunately i scrambled the numbers a little bit that was my fault because i went a couple of times back and forth but you see that we have all possible solution combinations blue long blue short yellow long yellow short green long and green short so all these six um, combination possible uh, possible combinations are presented here we go on and now we have to represent them in some way how do we want to present them to the customer um, as i told you before if we're talking about the taste of chocolate or wine or any food product uh, we have to present the food product and then you could in the description just uh, write please taste sample number 14 and we present number 14 in some type of uh, neutral box to the customers um, we can present an image of each product uh, like we had with the uh, car heater knobs um, that is um, the easiest way if you have properties to evaluate which can be ever evaluated uh, visually then an image would be useful you could add an audio so for example um, there are companies who want to evaluate the clapping sound of car doors for example to evaluate that they give a safe and secure feeling well high quality feeling and so on well an audio would be nice or a video if you uh, would need to present well say a sequence a new function on a app in your mobile phone then you want to ask people want to see how how these things work and to which direction you would press buttons and and so on uh, in this case we will just upload images we go to browse and then find them somewhere on pictures which we have been taken or sketches which we've been doing and uh, we upload them i've prepared some of some samples here you see blue long blue short yellow long yellow short green short and green long if you do this study just for testing the software or the purpose of it uh, you can use images from uh, from Google if you just Google and uh, use the thumbnails uh, they the size of the thumbnails will fit perfectly with this software so what we do go to browse go to no that is a different study uh, go to desktop and toothbrush and then we add a blue long this one open and upload so you see now we have a blue and long uploaded image browse blue short open upload blue short uploaded yellow browse yellow long with the first one yellow long open upload uh, in general uh, it's preferable to have these uh, images as similar as possible so uh, if you are comparing things to each other it would be nice to have things which are 
depicted in the same way. So uh, in in this from from this perspective, uh, these images are not good because these these toothbrushes point into different direction. So if you take pictures, make sure that you will take pictures in the same position, in the same lighting, in the same environment. Um, this and this would probably work. This is then a bit different because it's a different angle. But if you have them in the same way, pretty much it's easy for people to compare. If you're using things which are not on the market yet, where you're, or they are not in existence yet, so you're evaluating prototypes, then make sure that if you compare them to each other, that these prototypes are uh, are uh, depicted in the same way. So it's uh, not a good idea to have a handmade sketch and a rendered photo on another product because uh, then people will perceive products very differently. Okay, I filled that out for you now here. You see blue long, do you short, yellow long, yellow short, green long and green short. So we are ready to go to proceed to the next one. And uh, in the next step, you will get the summary. This one is green now, you'll get the summary. This is the details here. You see uh, which demographic questions you were asking, which uh, uh, words you, choose, you chose in the semantic space, and uh, which, space, which property of the uh, space of properties you were using, which samples you were using. By the way, there's something I just remember that uh, when you you can choose to call these samples for something. So uh, I would recommend to use something neutral. So if you would write blue long, that's easy for you to uh, to find pictures and put that up on the in the system. But then the uh, Participants in the study will also know that it's the color and the size you're evaluating. And this is what you don't want. You want to have them to elevate the total concept and not focusing on particular uh, properties. So so don't write blue and long. And uh, sometimes you can also see that people are choosing to call this sample for the brand. Uh, the brand also has a possibility to bias the whole result. So if there's a high quality brand, um, people will of course rate the quality higher because their experience with this brand is good. Uh, if there's a low quality brand, uh, they will rate the product lower. And um, that's not necessarily that they actually rate the product, they rate the experience with the product. So um, to have anonymous names or uh, neutral names here, would be uh, would be a good idea. When we have gotten to this point, we can go through all these things here, and uh, we can check, we can change th uh, things, we can uh, have a look if everything is correct. Uh, we can even have a preview link, and then you can see well these are the questions as they will look. And, and so on, so you can, you can still modify it. Uh, but uh, once we are in a situation where, where we are here, you know, where we have done, done this, we can publish the link. Once the study is published, you can't change anything anymore. Because then it's on to the, on the internet, the uh, questionnaire is sharp and if somebody would do a rating and you later on would change the choice of products um, the data would get get scrambled that's the reason why it's after after i publish the study it's it's locked i will do that now uh, we can do it in two ways uh, yeah this way is uh, the built-in possibility you can send a Recept a, a message to the recept uh, rept to the participants, asking them, "Well, okay, please uh, fill out this study for us," and then you add these mail addresses here. Oop. I'm sorry, this is my keyboard not working properly. So now. 
and then you send the survey. Whoops. Now we go back to the survey manager and uh, if we have a look on our study here, this is this study, it shows active, no answers, and uh, but it's active, so we can we can go on. What has happened now? The uh, system has uh, has sent me a has sent me a mail to to this address, and uh, um, the participants can can answer that. It's on now. Uh, in the meantime, while the participants do this, uh, you always always have the possibility to go into the system, have a look how many answers do I have. I can even make uh, intermediate evaluations on on the product, uh, on, on this uh, on, on the um, study which we are carrying out. Uh, there is, however, one more thing. Uh, since this system, this server, is sending out a lot of mail every day, every week, uh, all year round, because they are not just me and you on that server using Kessel, there are many other people as well. Uh, in some mail servers, uh, this mail address is uh, considered to be spam. So if you want to be sure that uh, it does not happen. It does not land in the recipient's spam box. I usually do it in a way that I send it to me to myself to my personal mail mail address. I get this link, and then I send this link to the participants from my personal mail address. Um, I don't know how to solve <laughs> that problem just now, but uh, we are discussing it in in the newer version. Maybe we have a better solution. So, here's the link, paste and go. Uh, you, you can, the link is online now, so uh, if you want to test it, you can easily use it if you want to. Go on, we start with the uh, demographic questions, my gender, my age, And then we have the range question, and here we know that we have to put this in, the number between 20 and uh, 40, because otherwise uh, I will be put out from the system. Please do that. If you test that link, you can do the same thing. And uh, now we have the first toothbrush. How soft is the head? Probably this question is difficult to answer, just from the picture, probably I, ha I should provide this. So I imagine that those which are which have a wider head are are more soft. So uh, yeah, I move it here, quite soft. How cool is it? Well, mm. green, not not that cool. Next one, this one is also very soft. And how cool does this feel? Mm. Yeah, well, okay, cool. Maybe, maybe this. So, by this way, I go go through it. Uh, I will now make a small break and uh, ask a couple of people to, to rate these uh, studies so we have some data in there, and then I will show you how to evaluate the results. Okay, now we are back, and uh, you see I have five answers. These are not representative answers, uh, but uh, let's see what uh, what we got. So if we go on to the evaluation bubble here, we can see that it's about uh, three men, two women. We have uh, different ages here, none in the lowest and the medium uh, category of, of age. Uh, we have uh, chosen all words, all samples, and, and so on. So uh, here, we neglect that just just a moment, but uh, here we can see that we can choose different analysis methods. I would suggest that we just run the QT1, we order an analysis, and uh, now it says Qt for execution. The reason is um, we have a lot of traffic on that server, which means that the server sometimes is quite busy to uh, to calculate the results and uh, that's why it it might take a couple of minutes um 
quite early in the morning so uh, hopefully we will have things done yeah well that's quick usually it can take up to 10 minutes and uh, now we look for the results of the QT1. QT1 stands for qualifi quantification theory type 1. So if we just have a look on this date, data, we can see that uh, we have the result for cool. <laughs> and for soft, I did the misspelling I see now. Sorry for that, but this is cool. <clears throat> and um, what we can see now, I have shown you in in the course how we can evaluate this data what what is behind it but uh, just to remember you quite quickly is that we have the mcc square which stands for multiple co correlation coefficient uh, saying that uh, it's a goodness of fit test so if this mcc square should be below 70 percent uh, we do have to regard the data as not reliable anymore um, here we can see it's about 99%, so uh, um, it's quite reliable. And actually, um, I have to admit, we chose the evaluation in, in a way that we got quite, good, got quite high reliability. Uh, then we can go to the first table here, saying the color and size. These are the items. Here you can see the PCC uh, for the um, for the color is 99%, for the size is 55%. <clears throat> this means PCC stands for partial correlation uh, coefficient, and it roughly explains the importance of the particular item towards the, can't say word, cool. So here you can see that the color is most important for cool, the size is uh, less important. And how should it be? Here you can see blue, yellow, green, long and short, and if we just look for these, these, these three, belong to the first to the color of course and here you can see that uh, blue 3.6 yellow 0 0.8 and green minus 4.5 uh, meaning that uh, the overall rating the average rating is generally has a tendency to be lower than average if it's green and it's uh, over average if it's blue it's slightly over average or almost neutral when it's yellow Okay, same thing for the uh, for the word soft. Soft is a, a, a word which was difficult to rate, and um, in order to make that accurate, you have to provide real toothbrushes which people can test uh, if they uh, to do uh, evaluate how um, how soft the uh, the head was. Anyhow, uh, we assumed. In, in this case, that uh, the head for the shorter ones were uh, were very hard, and uh, for the longer ones were very very soft. Just an assumption, just to show you how the system works, and uh, what you can see here that the color apparently has less importance than the size, and then you can see that uh, um, for the size we have uh, uh, a long. A long size which uh, is uh, positively related to soft and a shorter, uh, the shorter size is uh, negatively related to soft. As I said, I asked everybody who was rating that please rate all the shorter ones as very hard and the, uh, all the longer ones as soft. So, so it's the expected result. Um, so just to show you how, how the technology works. This is how the system works, and uh, in the course you're supposed to do your own product. My suggestion is use a product as simple as a toothbrush. Don't overdo it. Choose few words, can't say words. Choose uh, at maximum six categories, meaning three items and two categories each, or uh, two items and three categories. Uh, that results into a number of nine different products which you have to evaluate and that's easier if you want to learn about the software uh, later on when when you do things which are more complicated and more complex i think uh, um, you, you can you can use other techniques but i want to in the end just show you the results from this car heater experiment uh, we we had here and uh, you can see that we we did 
analysis before many times uh, in in the meantime but uh, i will just show you the first evaluation for the for the bill uh, for the car heat uh, knob unfortunately this is uh, not english but i will translate for you um what you see that we have uh, uh that is a sorry i'm i'm sorry this is a the wrong evaluation method i clicked wrong i wanted to have the qt1 here so now much better so this is these are the results from the car heater experiment uh, the mcc is about 0 0.7 check um, and then we had uh, this is for the word exact positioning and uh, then we had the different properties here the different items here the zero position uh, meaning that is uh, at what position the knob provides maximum cold air zero um, then the question whether there were ripples or not and what type of, of ripples sometimes uh, i'm not i'm not sure if you're even aware of that but if you have these uh, turning knobs these turning knobs sometimes have some type of ripple or no ripples and uh, then we were evaluating the force needed to manipulate that uh, for the exact positioning you can see that the most important thing is the is uh, the force and the ripples and uh, not so much the zero position so the position quadrant one and two meaning left side and right side are not not important for the ripples we have non small and big ripples and here you can see that the non ripples is negatively related to exact positioning uh, the big ripples as well but the small ripples are positively related to uh, um, exact positioning as well as the more heavy force if we go to to robust we have uh, similar things uh, here i just want to highlight uh, another one for the exclusive factor here you can see now uh, here you can see that uh, we have uh, for the exclusive factor we we have the zero position and the ripples and the force likewise in uh, important meaning that uh, it should be the maximum cold should be on the left hand side you should have small ripples and you should have the heavy force so uh what can we learn from that uh the more uh, even even this is just an example but this was an example which was made on on real products uh our normal studies we are doing uh we have many more product items we have many more samples uh, in in there and get other results i'm unfortunately because i will provide this video uh on the internet i can't show you about uh, the other samples but um, if you are interested into into more uh, of those you can go to uh, our homepage you can have a look on uh, the homepage can't say dot european union uh, this is the homepage for our uh, for the european can't say group it's a research a group within Europe. Also, you can find more videos on this channel, or you're welcome to drop me a line. Thank you very much for listening.